Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and welcome to my first challenge and process video for my No Spend November 2020 series. I hope you'll stick around, find out what the first challenge is, see what I'm going to make and find out how you can play along. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you're inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. As I announce on Friday in November, I am doing my best to use what I have in my stash and get extra crafty this month without spending any money on new supplies. I will be giving myself little challenges throughout the month to come here and share with you and I hope that you can join me. If you want to get the, all of the details on the prize and how and where you can enter, make sure to watch Friday's video. I will link that in the description box below, but here is a little overview for you before we get started. During the month of November, I will be putting out challenges for myself and for my subscribers. You can play along on YouTube, on Instagram, or on the brand new Call Me Crafty Owl Facebook page. At the end of the month, I will tally up those entries and one lucky subscriber will win the now sold out Gina K Designs Sparkle and Shine card kit. Don't forget for all of the official rules and details to check out the video linked in the description box below. The first challenge that I'm going to issue this month is Leaf Me Alone. Use a leaf or leaves in some way on your project. Today I will be using this Gina K Designs Autumn Silhouette stamp set for my leaf portion of my card. I just love the veiny look of these leaves here. I think they look so real and will be great on a card. I will be stamping them in a couple memento inks. I have rhubarb stock and potter's clay. And then I will be embossing some with detail gold embossing powder. For my sentiment, I plan on using this grateful from this Kelly Create stamp set. I wanted it to have a thankful theme and I liked that this grateful was a little bit larger than the gratitude sentiment in this stamp set. If I add any products later as I do my process, I will be sure to let you know. But as always, if I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. I did forget to mention in the intro that the card that I'm going to create today was inspired by one I recently made for an Inspired Saturdays video. If you want to see how I made this card, I will link that video in the description box below. For my focal point, I will be stamping onto a piece of off-white cardstock that is four and a half inches wide by three and a quarter inches tall. Now because I will be stamping off that piece, off the edges, I did bring in just a piece of paper out of the recycle bin to put underneath that. The first two leaves I stamp will be gold heat embossed. So I brought in my embossing buddy and wiped that on the cardstock so that my embossing powder only sticks to where I want it. Once that was done, I inked up my leaf with Versamark ink. I want that nice and juicy so when I pour on my gold embossing powder, it will stick nicely. I don't go ahead and heat it here. I go ahead and stamp and pour the powder over that second leaf. And you'll notice that there was a spot of stray gold embossing powder that I didn't want on there. So I just brought in a dry brush to wipe that away. Once both of those images had the powder on them, I brought in my heat tool and heat set that powder. I did heat from the front and back here, trying to have this warp as little as possible. Once those were set, I then started stamping my leaves in the other two colors. The first color I used was Potter's Clay, and I stamped two of the orange leaves. 
And then I brought in the rhubarb stock ink and I inked up and stamped that leaf again three times in the final color. The reason I stamped this color three times and not just two like the other colors is because I wanted to end up with an odd number of leaves just to go along with the rule of odds in design. I am still stamping, but for this next part I decided to bring in my Misty because I want to make sure my sentiment is stamped as centered and as straight as I can get it. So the Misty really helps out with this. And then if something's wrong or I need to ink it up again, it's already set up for that sentiment. And let me tell you, it was a good thing that I ended up using the Misty because the first couple times the magnet from the Misty interfered with the stamp because these are very thin stamps, so I couldn't get it pressed down. I did end up having to ink it up and stamp it three times, but finally on that third try, I could tell that I had a nice clean image stamped onto the cardstock. I added that detail gold embossing powder once more and heat set that with my heat tool. I know that I'm all over the place with my stamping surfaces here, but for this final part, I wanted to bring back in my black Sizzix mat because I really don't need the Misty for this since it is a single stamp that I have to use. This dot stick stamp is from Stamps by Judith, and you might have seen me use it quite frequently lately. I just like the fact that it adds what kind of look like paint splatters, um, but I can emboss them and I don't have to get messy. I stamped this three times around the outside edge of the card where I thought some more gold embossing would look nice. And here's a close up look at my oops for the day, but I'll clean that up later. For now, I went ahead and heat set those little stamps and finish that focal piece. After I got that mess cleaned up, it was time to finish my card. I got out a piece of gold textured cardstock from Die Cuts with a View. I looked at the package and this is from 2006. I knew I kept that for a reason. I cut that off camera so it was four and three quarters inches wide by three and a half inches tall. This just leaves a nice small border around that focal point. Finally, to finish this card off, I brought in my big blue roll of foam tape in the three quarter inch width, and I put three strips of that on the back of this focal point. That will make sure that it stays nice and flat when it's adhered to the card front, because it did get a little bit warped with all of that heat embossing. Once that release paper is pulled, I just center this on the card, and here are some looks at the finished piece. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made my card for the Leaf Me Out of It challenge. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. I can't wait to start seeing the links to your creations in the comment section below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.